In this video, I will show you the code for chapter two of the book, Practical Purposive Score Battles Using R. I am Walter Leite, um, and I hope you enjoy the instruction. The second chapter of Practical Purposive Score Methods with R is about estimating propensity scores. So I have the R code for this chapter posted in the website www.practicalpropensityscore.com. The data sets to run an example are also there. So the, this code here, we are estimating the propensity score of students participating in a career academy. So it's data uh, from the Educational Longitudinal Study of 2002. Now, it's typical that any data set used for propensity score methods uh, will have a lot of missing data. So because, be, before we can estimate the propensity score, the first thing to do is handle the missing data. Um, in this example, I'll demonstrate um, two approaches, multiple imputation and single imputation. Multiple imputation is a better method theoretically because it adjusts for the uncertainty of missing values. Um, however, in a lot of cases, um, single imputation may provide adequate results and it's simpler to implement. So I'll demonstrate both here. Now for handling missing data, I'm using a package called MICE, which stands for multiple imputation by chain equations, which is one um, paradigm for performing multiple imputation. Okay, so here first on line 18, I load the example data um, for chapter two. Then I, I load the library mice, which I use for multiple imputation. Um, by the way, I will not be running this example simultaneously as I explain it, because it's an example that takes a few hours to run. And so I ran it in advance and the results are here and I will just talk over them. Okay, so the first thing we do is look at the number of missing cases. So here I'm, I'm using the function ESNA to create um, dumb indicators of missing data. So these dumb indicators are zero if uh, it's missing, oh, it's not missing, and one if it's missing. So if I click on the object here, miss indicator, you can see the data set. So zero means not missing. So you can see that this variable here, for example, UI, C, V, S, star, and A, um, one is missing, zero is not missing. Um, so there are a lot of missing values here. Then I calculate the proportion of missing data. I will just print the results here. And you can see how there are variables with zero missing data, but there are also variables um, with up to, here, yeah, this one here, for example, BYG paired has 21% of missing data. Now, the next step in, in line 33 is I create the missing indicators that I created in the line 27, I, I give them names. So what I do is I use the original variable name and I added NA to them. Okay, so that's why in the, in the missing indicator data set, you can see that the variable names are that have missing data have an NA here because I added that there to indicate it's a missing data indicator. Okay. 
then I merge the, the missing data indicators to the original data. So now the data set has the original variables plus a set of zero one variables that just indicate whether the, there is a missing value or not. I can show the, the proportion missing overall here. Um, rounded. And so in R, it's important that all categorical variables are factors. Factors is, is a class of variables. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a variable called treat. And, my, and that is just a recording of my original treatment variable uh, into a factor. So my original treatment variable was called BYS33K. Um, and this was numeric, and I'm making it into a factor that will have a zero and ones. So if I keep, I now get a table, so I type table, ELS data, read. I see now I have I, zero is not treated, and I have 11,559 not treated, one is treated. Okay. Now, when you do imputation of missing data, it's critical that you impute separately treatment and control groups. And that's important because if you don't do that, you may attenuate your treatment effect. So I could have separated them, but what I did instead is write a loop ER that goes through both groups. Okay, so this loop here, a four is a loop ER, uh, it repeats the same operations for both group zero, which is not treated, and group one, which is treated. So uh, I first will create a list of predictors Now I could have used all predictors, but like when you have a lot of data, that's usually causes problems. If you have predictors that are completely related to, uh, to each other. So I used a criteria that the correlation needed to be at least 0.1. And to, to select predictors for the BC values and that there needed to be at least 50% of available data in these predictors, which that's what MIPOC 0.5 is. To, and then the correlations I'm checking are Pearson correlations. So predictor selection creates a matrix of zero ones, pretty long matrix, where one indicates that that variable is going to be used as predictor of missing values. Zero, it means that the variable is not going to be used as predictors of missing values. Now, after that, I will do imputation using mice. So I will call mice here. And because I want to do treatment and control group separately, I will use the, the function subset, and then I will impute five times using predictive mean matching as an imputation method. Predictive mean matching has been shown in research to work well and be robust. Uh, so that's the method I'm choosing here. And then for predictor meters, I provide the predictor selection that I did for. This takes a while to run. Um, and then after it completes, I need to extract the, the potential data sets. There are several ways to do that. I use, I decide to use a long format where the imputed data sets are stacked on top of each other. So I call it long imputation and I use the function complete to extract imputed data sets in long format, so stack them on top of each other. So that, that will do, obtain five imputed data sets for treatment and control and stack them. 
Now, I also decide to do single imputation. So, what I to demonstrate, so I call this object imputation one, which is a subset of long imputation where the imputation number is one. So, I'm just in this imputation one, I'm just taking the first imputed data set. Um, and as I said before, it's better to use multiple imputed data sets, but for the simplicity of demonstration here, and I will also just show analysis with a single imputed data set. Now, to be able to use our imputed data sets, it's convenient to use the, the library MI tools. MI is multiple imputation tools. So this, this is a library of functions that facilitate multiple imputation. So, and I'm creating this list here that has all the, the five imputed data sets within the list. And that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use our imputations, both imputation one and our imputations to, to estimate propensity scores. Okay. So the um, I will so I will show how to estimate propensity scores uh, with logistic regression in a separate video. Uh, this video will, call, will stop here where I finished the, the, the analysis we're just having imputed data sets.